Can you hear that? I swear I hear church bells. Hmm. I think there's a wedding going on. Time for a challenge. Hey everyone, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. Uh, okay, challenge day. This is suggested by a number of t uh, TPS viewers. Something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. The Omb challenge. Very good. <laughs> uh, Dan and Mick, for this challenge, you must choose four items to create a rig comprising something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue. You can interpret that as you wish. Right. And if you hadn't guessed it yet, the rig is for your upcoming wedding gig. Awesome. Okay. Yep. More challenge details will be forthcoming as the gig progresses, but now it's time to get going. You need to be metaphorically out of that door and on the way in 25 minutes. Go. Oh, blimey. Okay. All right. We're off. Right then. Um... So four things, this should give us quite a lot of scope. In the past, I've been minded to keep it simple, try to prove a point using a one channel amp, you know, all of that sort of bravado stuff. Uh, I'm gonna throw that out the window. I'm pretty sure I'll go for a channel switching amp. Uh, we don't actually have that many channel switching amps, but the one I do have and the one I used four years uh, in a good number of wedding gigs was my Mesa Lone Star. As I've said before, the problem with this particular Lone Star is the reverb doesn't work, but that's okay. I think that's going to have to be my something old. Um, it's tempting to take the old strap, but I've got other ideas for guitars. So I think that's going to have to be my something old and I hope it qualifies because it's probably, probably 20 years old. Something blue. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Somewhere on here. I keep, there you are, there you are. Delay and reverb. The reverb doesn't work in the Lone Star. So that's going to provide delay and reverb, loads of presets thereof and be all good. Um, Something borrowed, well, the borrowed is gonna be the guitar and I'm as yet undecided. Option one, 64 SG from Gibson Custom. That is borrowed from Gibson. That would be old, new, borrowed and blue. <laughs> um, or the Cutler dual humbucker S-Type there, which is borrowed from Dean Cutler who made it. Um, Something new is quite difficult. We're gonna to have to interpret that because it's, I guess it's either new to the market or new to us or something we haven't used before. But I think um, I'm gonna go with new to me and it's relatively new to the market. And it's gonna be a multi effects device that does uh, modulations. So I know where it is because I saw it earlier. One Platerraform. This is a bit of a risk for me because I tend not to be very good with multi devices. It also will require a bit of bending down and fiddling with things because it's got a whole bunch of chorus, you know, load of wobbly sounds, all the, all the classic modulations. And I'm choosing that in favour of more overdrive. And I think I might end up paying for that because I'm just not sure I've got a heavy distortion sound in the amp. Um, but we'll see. So something old, Mesa Lone Star, something new, Wampler Terraform, Something borrowed, either the Murphy Age 64 SG or the Cutler S type. Something blue, Source Audio Collider. Let's put it together. Okay, with apologies for shaky cam in advance, I guess I've got, I've got three things to get on here. So you have to come off. You have to come off. quite tough you know because um so tempting to leave off one of the clever pedals and just go with my two rock and a, a very flexible overdrive but I figure this is in the spirit of the of the challenge because I'm going to have the maximum number of sounds available how annoying is that side jacks on both of these things now we've got a problem because maybe this isn't big enough because I've got to have the amp foot switch on there as well look so the terraform and the collider have got to go on one thing, but they can't because they've got silly side mounted jacks. So in the hilarious embarrassment of Rich's world that that pedal show is, one Schmidt array goes. 
another one arrives. You're out there. Two things next to each other. I've got tap tempo, so it kind of makes sense to have them accessible. Gubbins, 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 gubbins. I will be running the um, delay and reverb in the loop of the amp because I'm going to be using um, overdrive from the amp. And, and I think for the sort of cleanest range of sounds possible, having the effects post overdrive would be good. To power these, I'm going to need uh, a distributor and two, one Time Lord, I mean two Time Lords, so I need to find another Time Lord. For okay, progress. Uh, oh, I can hear somebody coming, better shut the door. So the Terraform and the Collider are on there, powered with two high current nine volt adapters. So we can close the lid. And on the top, the Lone Star foot switch. Um, I guess I'm just gonna put it over to the right because right footed. But we'll see. So just plug in the IEC and hopefully we should things should light up. Great. Terraform's working. Collider's working. Should be ready to go. Okay, mix left for a minute. Uh, I don't have long. So, uh, right. Old, new, Borrowed blue. Um, something old. Okay. What do I need? I need an amp. I need a guitar. I need a gain stage and something else. Um, it would seem obvious for the old thing to be the Telecaster. But I'm also thinking... Uh, I might actually use my old Vox for this gig. Having done loads of wedding gigs, I actually think that amp works really well um, at low volume to sound nice and big. I need a gain stage. So, okay, let's say that the AC30 is going to be my old. Um, something new, I think it's going to be this. So, Dan Coggins from Dinosaurial. Uh, this is his Cogmeister. So it's basically three gain stages. So anything, I mean, this sounds awesome. And anything I need, I think I'll be able to get with this. I think, I think. I haven't got a guitar yet. Aha, aha. I'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt young Michael. I've got a favour to ask. Yeah. Tucked in behind the Supro. Can I borrow the uh, GNL from you? Oh, I see. I'm in the way, am I? No, no. I'm just. This is my borrowing. Okay. Can I borrow this? You can. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So Mick obviously knows now the guitar I'm using, but that's okay. Um, I need a T-shaped object, and this is great. This would be great for a wedding gig. Okay, amp, old, new, gay stage, guitar, and I need a delay, ideally delay and reverb, at least a delay. I would love to use this, but I'm not going to get away with that being blue, right? That's not blue, that's green. Oh, okay. Right, well this could work. So I won't have any reverb, but this is lush. You know, it's really easy to dial this in and it sounds great. The tricky thing about wedding gigs for me, and we'll, I'm sure we'll go through this next door, it's a lot of 
sing-along type tunes. So you need an appropriate gain stage for that. A lot of that stuff is just straight through to the amp or a little bit of grind. That's flexible enough, I think, to get all the gain sounds I need. And then just a bit of... See, I can get chorus sounds with this. Because it's got depth and modulation on the repeats, I can actually get faux chorus sounds. So I can do all those, um, you know, jangly sing-along stuff with a bit of modulation in the background or, you know, long solos for repeats. So I think that will work. Uh, I'll put these together on a board. Um, let's see what I've got. I mean, this is completely overkill for this. I don't need a board like that. I wonder what I've got. Oh, I have a tiny thing. Oh, okay. Will this work? There's a company called Morton Pedal Boards, and they make these modular boards. Um, you can buy all different elements of it and screw it together and make the board that you want. Seeing as I only need a tiny, tiny board, I reckon I can take this back end off, just have the front bit there, and I'll be good to go. When you can't find the tool you need, I get frustrated, like Mick does when he's putting pickups in a 335. Um, is that right? There we go. There we go. I've now got two separate pedal boards. Um, that'd be fine. Get the stuck on there. One patch lead. There's my board. Awesome. So the Cogmeister is fairly low current. Um, so isolate will be fine on that. The Memory Man takes a bit more current. So I just need to double check that I've got everything I need. I've got a Mr. Universe adapter here, which will isolate the power going to the Memory Man. Um, I'll put a virtual battery or something on here. Don't show my, my desperate to untidy workspace. <laughs> so, so one of the things with the pedal boards that have the rails is getting the, if you already have any Velcro or anything on the pedals, getting that to line up with the rail. So you can see, I've already got um, some pedal or tape on here, and it's basically exactly where <laughs> the, the rails are. But if I have this right at the front, I reckon I'll be okay. One thing with pedals like this, so you see how the foot switches are close to the edge of the pedal. If I had these right up close here, then I run the risk of hitting these two together. So I, I try and keep a reasonable distance between them. Um, you know, not much, but just to stop the risk of me hitting both foot switches at once. So that's good there. If you do use this pedal board tape, I mean, you only need a tiny, tiny bit. Um, you can see these tiny squares that are already on the bottom here. I mean, that's enough. Um, I might use, you know, a very thin strip like this. Put that on here. Because these little mushroom noblets, they, they stick so well to each other. So in actual fact, having too much pedal will take some massive pain because you can never pull the thing off. But having a little bit, and then it sort of clips off, which is really nice. Another trick with a pedal board tape, once you put it on, you do need to let it dry. You know, give it a day before you try and start pulling it off again. That glue that's on the bottom here will dry. Okay, right. All right, so this is it. I'll quickly put the um, power supply stuff underneath. Throw this in the back of the car. And we're off to the venue, where I guarantee there'll be loads of stairs.
to get up, they have to carry the gear up to. Um, and we'll have to be there, <clears throat> and we'll have to be there by five, but we won't go on until half past nine, ten o'clock. Um, so yeah, all good, all right. I think, let me just get this all wide in. Um, yeah. So, this will just go in the back. Through here. Beautiful. Everyone's happy. Off to the gig. Back in the room. <laughs> I don't think we did a finger snap out, did we? Ah, sorry, we were in a rush. We were in a Had rush. Had to get to the wedding. Okay. I'm, I was late getting to the wedding. I st got stuck behind a tractor. I couldn't find stuff. <laughs> it was, I found this really hard. The thing I found, the thing I lost most time looking for was a flipping tripod to film myself. I cheated and I got Hades of Valhalla to follow me around. Ah. <laughs> I, was like, I did. It's like, I was like, 25 minutes, there's no way me <laughs> running myself going trying to... Uh, Making so, decisions yes, then. Indeed. Right, come on then. Old. Something old. Yeah. All right, I'll start. Something old. A 1961 Vox AC30. That's okay. old. My old is also my amp, but it's actually oh. not that old. Okay. Come on. Mesa Lone Star uh, with a custom covering. It's 20 years old. Right. That, that'll do. You were a wee band when it was made. Yeah. Okay. Uh, new. <sighs> okay. Obviously, you're going to have to reveal the pedal boards. Reveal the pedal board. All right. Here we go. Okay. So new for you. New for me is the Dinosaur Cogmeister. That's yeah. that's my new. Okay, new for me is the Wampler Terraform. Very interesting. I'll explain that in a sec. Right. Uh, okay, borrowed. Oh, so you know this one because I came in and borrowed oh, okay. it from you. Oh, interesting. Of all the guitars you could have borrowed from me, you've gone for that. Yeah. Nice. Whenever we've played this guitar, yeah. I've really liked it. It sounds mega. It sounds fantastic. It's really easy to play, and, and I really like this guitar. I can't so wait to hear it in your hands, especially as it's probably got little strings on it, but we'll see. Yeah, they're not too bad, actually. Are they not? Yeah. It might be ten and a half. Okay, my uh, borrowed is also uh, a guitar. Let me guess. And I've got the choice of two. And I still haven't quite decided. Oh. So this, because it's possibly the coolest guitar in the in the in the yeah, room yeah, currently, yeah, yeah. with the exception of Dan sixty one uh, SG Junior, um, and I like the idea of a challenge with it, double humbucker. Mm -hmm. This, even though I don't tend to play uh, humbucker S types, may well be more familiar ground for me. Okay. Um, so you know what? Because we've heard this quite a lot. You're going to go with... A... I'm going to choose this. <laughs> Very good. And we'll be hearing that a lot more. I'm going okay. to choose this. Um, the Dean Cutler uh, custom-built S-Type with uh, two, I think they're bare-knuckle mules. So that's my borrowed. Very nice. And uh, your blue, Dan? My blue is the Deluxe Family Band, the uh, 1100 TT. Uh, blue for me, Collider Delay and Reverb, because I thought the reverb in the Lone Star doesn't work. I just turned it up and it does work. Okay, so I didn't but use apparently... the collider because it's green. <laughs> Actually, no, I did. I, I asked Hades and he said it's dark blue. Are you colour blind? Probably. See, to that's... me, that's blue, that's blue, that's blue, that's blue. That's like a gunmetal grey, dark green. But I guess it's on the blue. I'd say it's blue. Okay, fair enough. Okay, um, let's plug in. Right. Something old then. Yes. Perhaps a good place to start is to dial in your sort of core tone, yeah. given that our old things are both our amps. Okay. So I, the way I'm going to go about this with the SE30, I'm going to go into the, normally I'd go into the EF86 channel. Yeah. Right? Just turn up, rock out. 
But because it's a wedding gig and I want to be a bit more respectful, I'm going to go into the Brilliant channel the, with the bass and treble. Brilliant. Brilliant. And what's interesting about the way that the EQ is done on the AC30 is that you, if you turn the bass, get the treble to a point where you like it, turn the bass all the way up, and then you turn it down, and there's a point where the mids kick in. Right. Right? And basically, I've got the treble, I've got the bass all the way up, and I've turned it down, I've just got a hair of mids. So, no amp cam today, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just getting a, a, a smattering of the mids. So basically, in between position would be this. <laughs> It's very dry, so I would never play a sound like that. I would always have a bit of this. If you dig in, how much? Clean, clean, clean. Very, very clean. Nice. Very clean. Okay, my old is going to take a little bit longer because there's a bit more going on in the amp. Yep. If I can manage to untangle myself from the short cable, because we've used all the long ones doing other things. So the Lone Star, as you may know, this is a Lone Star Classic, one of the first ones that came out, 100 watt one. Uh, it's got two channels. Right. So immediately we've got we've got relatively clean and it might be that uh, I don't know to see where we are. Nice and clean. Very, very nice. But what it's also got is uh, if you have the effects loop in, which I have because I've got my pedals in the effects loop, you've right. also got foot switchable master volume. So I've okay. got two levels of that clean sound, right? Right. Very nice. Which is cool for the clean sounds yeah. because um, sometimes those cleans can be really too transient. Yes, and you need to pull them back. Yeah, yeah. but I guess where it makes a bit more sense in some respects is on the overdrive channel because what I would normally do with a, a dual channel amp is I would use the overdrive channel usually for my quieter rhythm yeah. overdrive sounds. Use the clean channel with pedals for the lead sound just because mm -hmm. there's more headroom. So. Again, might have to make some adjustments at the amp here, okay. but here's the second channel. I would sit okay under vocals probably as a heavy rhythm sound, Okay, but it is reminding me why I got rid of the Lone Star. <laughs> Because it is very, very compressed sure. and very squashed. So maybe we'll turn the gain down a little bit as time goes on. Okay. But if you do that sound again, just roll back your volume. I yeah. just want to hear that. Thank you. 
I don't want to lose any gain. Okay. Because when I've got me solo sound on, I don't want any less gain than No, that. absolutely. So as always, we're just right in that kind of, oh my God, too much gain, not enough volume, too much volume, not enough gain, too much gain, not enough volume. And I've always found with channel switching amps, that is the compromise. Sure. Because with pedals, with overdrive pedals, I can really dial it in. Okay. With this, a little bit harder work. But anyway, so that's... Were you not tempted to have one pedal go in the front and deliver the delay and reverb in the loop? Well, as in, did you want, as, as in then um, I like a heavy to, water or something? I would have to have lost that or that. Right. Because we've only... Yeah, yeah. But I just want, you know, as opposed to having the the terraform... Yeah, it could be overkill, the terraform. And it'd be, yeah. I don't know. I don't know, because it depends what songs yeah. are going to happen. Yeah. Because well, I, I don't have... All I've got is maybe a little bit of chorusing on the delay. Yeah. That's all I've got. Yeah, yeah. I've gone for maximum versatility and yeah, compromise yeah, yeah. my game. That's, yeah, okay. But actually, where, where the... We'll, move on quickly, but where the Lone Star comes into its own is when it's really loud. Sure, When okay. it's quiet and you've got all that compressed gain going on, that's where I liked it least. Okay. But when it's open and loud, it really starts to sing. Okay. Okay. Nice. Uh, old, new? Uh, new, the dinosaur. So I saw, when Dan Coggins released this a while ago, and I've been a big fan of his pedals for a long time, I think I've got all the dinosaur stuff, and they all sound great. Um, People that don't know Dan, he was the designer behind the uh, Love, Tone. Love Tone series of pedals, and he also works at Thorpey. A brilliant designer. Anyway, I knew I would love it. I got this, and I love it. it sounds great. So I've got three different gain stages in this one pedal. So if I go for a basic, from that clean sound, I'll turn the delay off for a sec, to a basic overdrive sound, okay? <laughs> You're struggling with those light strings, aren't you? I am. I am. I'm bending it all out of tune. Um, so for me, that's a nice middle of the road, you know, all of all of your all that shenanigans guy is all there. But I dig in, it's nice. It's really nice. Now, when I need uh let's go back to the clean sound for a second. With the pre the push section which is pre-drive if i go back to the clean sound i'm already regretting not having an extra overdrive pedal right now what i love about that it's a little bit crunchy but if i back the volume on It's a wedding gig. It's going to be more sing along, yeah, yeah. jangly than anything, and I and 100%. I just want to, you know, I want to make sure that I've got that. But now, if I combine that push channel with the drive channel, yeah, man, <laughs> it's so killer. And then you've got this the solo which then can give that a push again, so. So I've got yeah. everything covered. I so wish I'd gone this route. <laughs> I've said on the show many times that we just don't like channel switching amps because you're just tied. 
It's a it's a challenging thing. But I'll, if you, I would say, if you'd had a boost in the front, yeah, 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 just to anyway. give you that extra gain stage. But however, however, that's I that to, to be able to control your level and drive level like that. That's everything, isn't it? Everything. That, that's that's the first step. Sure. Which I have not taken. All I would say is that the rock sound that you get is the best gain well, sound so far. Right? Let's carry on. But uh, the, that for me, that volume yeah, is Yeah, yeah. I know I'd be much happier with that. Anyway, um, new then Terraform. So if we need some a wide variety of sounds, I've got some modulation options on here. It's in the loop currently. Mm -hmm. um, the annoying thing is I, I cannot read the top panel, so I'm going to have to take a picture of it. Literally, oh, I can just about, I can just about. The writing is so small, even with my glasses, I'm struggling. Right. So let's go for a, um, I think that's a Univibe. Let's try something else. Uh, we've got tremolo. So if we're doing what's the frequency, Kenneth, I've got that. It will take me five minutes to work out beforehand. And just one more. Um, a chorus. Is that, does that say chorus? I really can't read what, what it says, which is a slight problem. <laughs> It sounds really good. So with a bit of time spent, oh, man. yeah, I it's think it's great. I hope saving is is uh, as much as going. Nope. So maybe it is. Let's get sound. There you go. Confirm. Not in any way intuitive. So, yeah, gonna have to read the manual. Sorry. Right. Should be press and hold. Isn't press and hold. We got multiple lights on. That's obviously two banks of yeah, two banks of presets, right? So yep. I think what I just saved it to was maybe that, that preset. One. Yeah. Okay. I have worked it out. Took. Took four minutes, but <sighs> new. It's very cool. Uh, you can't underestimate how nice it is to have some decent other sounds to go to to keep it interesting in the gig. Well, also, if a Van Halen tune pops yeah, up, which totally. there isn't going to be one, just a spoiler alert, 
Um, you can you can do that. Okay. You can you can do, and certainly if you are playing any of those eighties ballads and stuff, mm. bit chorus, happy days. Yeah. Uh, borrowed. Borrowed. I borrowed this from you. Um, it's actually it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to Andertons. It's been double borrowed. Yeah. Great. So so there you go. I'm, I'm extra borrowed. borrowed. <laughs> uh, I've always really liked the sound of these guitars. If I if I look at the parts in isolation, for me it shouldn't work. Yeah. But it does, and it sounds great. I'm having a bit of problem keeping it in tune. Because you need heavier strings. Because I need heavier strings, and it hasn't been played for a long time. So However, you... it's super comfortable to play. Yeah. And it's a uh, it's a sound that I'm really familiar with. I gigged one of those for quite a few years. I was I was in an indie band when I was at university, and I had an, an ASAT special like that wow. with, the, with the MFD pickups. And I love that guitar. Yeah. They just, it sits, they're ceramic magnet pickups, right? Which you, is not something Dan and I no. would usually go for, but. It's killer. Yeah. So that's my borrowed. You're going to hear it all the way through the video. So there's no need for me to, set, you know, go through it. But it's fantastic. I could very happily take this to a gig yeah. and do everything I need to do on it with this guitar. Nice. Uh, my borrowed is the Dean Cutler. Um, I will put the name of the guitar in the. Um, I think it might be called a Panama Classic or something like that. I, I always forget. But um, we met Dean, he came to an experience day, and this sort of guitar is really not usually my thing for mm. so many reasons. Mm. Um, but I played this and instantly was like, let's order one. You can make us one. And Dean very kindly agreed. So we've got one in the equivalent tangerine orange. Beautiful. Oh, that's fantastic. Coming. And in the meantime, he left this one with us to sort of get au fait because we don't have a guitar like this, right? No. You know, with the dual humbuckers. and. I do struggle a, struggle a bit with humbuckers that aren't on classic Gibson guitars because I just haven't learned how to really use them. Sure. But I figure for this kind of gig, given that my strat didn't really fit into any categories today. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'd give it a go. And like Dan just said, um, you'll be hearing it throughout the rest of the video, so no real need to go into it here. Okay. And blue. Something blue. Okay. Memory Man, uh, the 1100TT. So. This came out a few years ago, and it's basically uh, Electro Harmonics have done a series of, on me of memory RAM pedals, boy, memory toy. boy, toy, all those things, and and there's a few different versions of this. Um, but I've always loved the sound of the memory man. For anyone wanting to know, I don't think that this sounds as good as my old one. Actually, you know, name drop. Ed O'Brien and I sat down for a long time with a bunch of memory, memory my, <laughs> and A beat a bunch of them. He has a green version of this that actually sounded better than mine. Okay. But the great thing about this, it do, it does has the yeah I think it, it has the memory man's th thing on it, but it's tap tempo, which is fantastic. It also has a center return in it so that you can put things in the delay loop. Does 1100 mean 1100 milliseconds? Yes. So, so it's, it's also long. almost three times the length of an original memory. Yeah. Band. The original was supposed to be 550 if you set it up properly. Oh, was it that much? Yeah, okay. Never, twice. Never, twice. Never twice was. Yeah, twice. Excuse um, me. So, you know, and you've got your... So for me, it's just the fact that you can go... And then, it sounds killer. Yeah, it's great. And it's interesting, like you said right at the top, if you've got a nice sounding delay that goes off warm like that, instead of being very bright like a modern digital delay, it can so easily cover up for having no reverb. Yeah, the Andy Timmons thing. Yeah. You know, get a nice thick delay and, you know, away you go. Yeah. So. You know, it's you know, it's simple, but it's it will give me that. Uh, it'll cover up for not having the for the reverb. It gives me modulation, so I get those chorusy things. It works great with distortion and clean. So yeah, yeah, and I know it. I can get if I need to stop. If we're doing a specific song with a specific uh, sound that I need, if I've got to go down and bend the knobs and turn it, do it super I'll quick. do it in in seconds. Yeah, yeah. To a lesser degree, the Collider also fits that um, 
that description and it's it's my blue delay and reverb in one box um we've always liked it because if you look at the left if you look at that side of the you can't i mean you won't be able to see it in pedal cam it's too small but you've got all the green things are delays uh the yellow things are reverbs and this switch here if you switch it over there you're adjusting delay yeah if you switch it over here you're adjusting reverb and if you have it in the middle it's off so let's start with reverb then um we'll just turn the reverb on mm -hmm. this is a, a kind of a basic plate reverb <laughs> I'm a massive fan of room reverbs. Sounds so good. So it's all in there. Storing presets, um, select, hold, and save. Can I just hear that sound with a bit of a channel two on it? Yeah. Sorry, way too much chorus. No, it's killer. <laughs> but delay and reverb in one, you can save presets. Uh, and as you can see there, I can dial it in pretty quick because I'm familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. The delays, you've got everything from tapes to really bright digital to sure. all kinds of things. So before I met Dan, I don't think I owned a delay pedal. Wow. Maybe. I never played with delay because I just didn't understand it. Now right. I can't live without it. Yeah, I love sure. it for um, everything from a slapback for rock and roll stuff mm. right up to, you know, again, so you can tap it, right? It's quite a clever switch. Once it's on, I think if you push it soft, it's tap. Okay. That might be something. So all source audio pedals come with the neuro phone. Okay, the app thing. The app. Yeah. It might be something you can check. You can change in there. No Apologies, doubt. I do not know. Yeah. So anyway, it tell does, you what, it sounds it tap tempo. It sounds flipping magic. It always sounds magic. Master Boogie know how to do effects loops. Yeah, don't they? Yeah, they really do. <laughs> it sounds great, and and like nothing's been taken away. Yeah, really, really nice. Okay, that's it. Old, new, borrowed, and blue. Then. <laughs> oh heavens! Oh, we heavens. have incoming, as if by magic. Uh, 
It's uh, Challenge Airways, ch Challenge <laughs> One Airways. To move this all along a bit, Challenge One is. Um, oh my God! You've unexpectedly been called to play the bride down the aisle, Dan. What are you gonna do? Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> So, clean sound. Uh, like as in as in wedding march. She's thing. she's walking down she's the aisle. Walking down the aisle. Like, okay. I was an FTC fan, so... I, I don't! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to go for the same. I'll stick in the key of G. Uh, I'll go for the same sort of thing. I want a massive reverb, right? Right. So we'll go for a whole reverb. work. <laughs> I think we just got chucked out of the church, mate. Yeah, the, the priest is throwing holy water on you as you're going out. And... <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, heavens! Uh, Challenge Airways 2. Yeah. They've, they've got... Uh... If, if, you, if you're finding this lame, it is pretty lame. To be... <laughs> okay, Challenge, uh, Challenge Airways number 2. It's the first dance. Oh, heavens, okay. Uh, in this hat are five of the world's most popular first dance tunes. You need to approximate a reasonable tone for it, but be careful not to actually play it, otherwise we'll get done for copyright. Fantastic. All uh, right. right, first dance tunes. Oh, I might have messed up the next challenge. Right, first dance tunes, Daniel. You never can tell, Chuck Berry. Okay. Brilliant. I don't know that one. Do you know it? Rock and roll. Okay, all right. It's basically a Chuck Berry lick. It's sort of... All right. 
All right. So, that one. All right. Well, I don't know what the key it is, but... Um, so you need a rock and roll sound, basically. All right. We've had a lovely day. Shame about the fight, but, um, you know... Apparently the stitches are healing nicely. Anyway, uh, we would like to welcome the bride and groom to the dance floor for the first dance. But first, can the owner of a Ford Capri uh, license plate, the 999XXX, please move it uh, from the entrance hall. Anyway, it's the first dance, ladies and gentlemen, the bride and groom. It's Chuck Berry's uh, You Never Can Tell. That's as that's as rock and roll as as I get. And and where do you think you've gone? Where do you think you've done there, Dan? Not great. Why? Um, I'd never play that stuff. Okay, too much gain. Too much gain. Yeah. Oh, okay, interesting. Try this middle 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 position. Right. So, I'm going to turn the tone down a acceptable rock and roll sound I'd say. So it's so okay that rock and roll thing is cleaner than I an anticipate. Yeah That's and maybe, maybe, maybe slightly less slap back I think if you had a rock and roll sound at a wedding gig with that I'd be happy. Okay. I'd be going I'm happy with that. Okay. If all I right. was in the assembled throng. All right all right Rocking. there you go. Right. Oh, one, one has selected itself Daniel. <sighs> Ho Hey by the Lumineers. Okay. Uh, it's in G, isn't it? I have actually done this song. You have? I don't know it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it's, it's uh, a one and four uh, vamp, isn't it? Sure. Okay. So this could be any song, I reckon. So, I don't think we need all that. I'm probably going to go with a room reverb um, to to just uh, make it sound, give it a bit of ambience, right? Right. No chorus. And I guess this would be played on an acoustic guitar. So I'm going to try the middle position, okay. volume down a bit. A bit more volume. Oh no, wait, not bright enough. So we're we're on the bridge pickup. So we're gonna give it a Gonna finish on a minor chord so we don't get copyright. <laughs> So the room reverb's giving it a bit of um, natural chorus. It's really great. I'm surprised how well 
the straight humbucker works as a jangly clean thing. Yeah, so what I've done there is I've turned on the louder clean sound. And you've turned and it back. And I've turned the guitar down more. There you go. Um, now, it is quite mid-honky rich, but I think there's Very enough, acceptable. enough jangle there. Very acceptable. Enough well done, there. that's nice. Okay, uh, very good. There we go. Um, Hades, I'm going to call on you to uh, score these later. Okay, right. Challenge number three. There's been a request from the father of, of the bride, who's had a couple of sherbets. <laughs> his tie's around his forehead, and he's paying the band, so this isn't optional. His requests are in this hat. Okay, I believe it's the Fez of Truth, Dan. <laughs> Brilliant. And uh, you go first this time. All right. Father of the Bride requests. Look, it says it. Very good. See, Father of the Bride we, requests. No expense spent. What I hadn't fathom, what I thought I was going to get you with this, but the first person to do this task must also wear this hat for the remainder of the video. Okay, okay. Yeah, so there you go. That's, uh, I've slipped up there. Okay, because obviously the night's getting on now. Exactly. Everyone's a bit... Everyone's wants the Fez of Truth. <laughs> Show me. Brilliant. Enter Sandman. <laughs> Come on. Come oh, on. Oh, no. So he's that guy. Well, you pick one out, and but don't look at it yet, because right. I need to put the hat on. Okay. Uh, okay, I must wear the Fez of Truth for the remainder of the video. Um, okay, so it's Enter Sandman by Metallica. As you know, I'm a massive Metallica fan. I'm just going to make a quick adjustment to my amplifier. Okay. Okay, because what I need, right, is a, is, I need a clean sound. Is there? Yeah. Let's start off clean. That's it? It does. Okay, so I need chorus then. What I've done for my gain sound is I've turned the middle down a bit and the bass and treble up. Okay. To see if we can do that. I'm going to have to try and play a riff that is not Enter Sandman, okay. otherwise we will get copyright struck. Okay. So I'm going to have to play Just something. Major. Um, <laughs> on as well it's, completely by mistake it's great it works brilliantly now what we don't have of course when the solo comes around please be an auto one yeah there here. is bottom left uh. <laughs> How the solo goes? <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. That's Sorry. great. Sorry, Kurt. No, no, it's really good. That, you've done really well. Really well. Okay. What have you got then? I've got. What have I got? <laughs> Fight for your right to party, <laughs> Beastie Boys. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
totally think you'd get away with that. Totally. Yeah. It's trashy. It, it, right, so the solo. It's got a really short delay on it, hasn't it? I don't know it. That's a, that's a, I would say it's an acceptable sound, though. Okay. Okay. So the combination of a really great basic gain sound and that short slap is... I th you could cover so yeah. much ground with totally. that. Totally. And days. I can get there... For just tapping my foot. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's great. Okay, I'm ha very happy with that. Um, <laughs> number four. <laughs> There's four parts of this challenge. Surely not a challenge. Uh, another challenge. This uh, one's been printed upside down, don't it? Uh, okay, challenge four. Well done. Well done. You've got through the gig just about. It's time for one last dance floor filler to close the night. Five popular set closers are in this hat. Okay. Uh, set closers, then. Sex on Fire, Kings of Leon. Oh, nice. There's a cream for that. Good. I'm going to pick mine. I shall leave it here. Dan, you have to wear this hat for the remainder of the video. <laughs> okay. Great. Can I wear it? Can I do this? You can do whatever you like. Is that? Because isn't this? Well, they're not LA rockers. I want to see you flat peaked. What's it? Oh, no, no. Right, flat peak, mate. Right, well, I got no idea what that is. It means. It means that. <laughs> Done it, Aid. Fine. This is me from now on. I'm. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, so Kings of Leon, Sex on Fire. If you so, play in a cover band and you haven't played this, you haven't played in a cover band. Yeah. I think interestingly, there's a lot, this song's got a lot less gain in it. So if I go back to. Yeah, so you're gonna have to play it wrong, remember? Yeah, okay. Quite a muffly sound, oh, I think. Oh, okay. The intro. Interesting. I could be wrong, I could be wrong. All right, here we go. I would say again, too much game, man. Okay. And maybe I, I, I misled you, but probably a little bit brighter. A little brighter. Yeah. on that. What's interesting in that, when he plays that, um, or whatever it is, that's when you hear the discordant of the bend in yeah. the delay. You yeah, really right. hear it uh, with the overdrive. Right. Killer Man, I think. 
I think you get away with that. Yeah. I'm not nailing it. I'm getting away with it. That's the thing. But you, you know what I mean? It's wedding gig, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Don't it's step in the band, gig. mate. Yeah. <laughs> it's taken me two seconds to dial it in. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my floor filler last song of the night challenge is... Oh, no. What is it? It's Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. <laughs> you got this. I, I really, I don't know it at all. Okay. So, but of course... So what we've got is massive piano chords. So it's roughly in C, I reckon. Okay. Yeah, so I think that would be easy yep. enough. You could, if you did want to play anything over the, the piano chords, God, please don't play anything over the piano chords. <laughs> what I would do for this is probably- Oh, there's no piano player. I, yeah. <laughs> I'd have a bit of a plate reverb, and I'd do um, I'd, at most a quarter note delay. Okay. So, um, that might be too much, actually. I don't know the chords. It would help if there was a melody, but that's. But as a sort of general approach. Even though that's pretty wet, I think that would sit under it okay. Because everyone's going to be singing along. Yeah. And it just needs a bit of fatness. And please, right. please don't play over the piano player if there is one, but I think you can get away with that if there wasn't. Right. Right. Solo. So it's Brian and it's mid boosted AC30, there and I'm go. in trouble here because I don't have anything like that. So, um, I'm going to go with the room because uh, the D key. Amp, if it was the DK amp, yeah, always had that roomy quality to me. I thought. Right. So we need to get a really fat midly sound, and I don't know how we're going to do this. That's fantastic. That's. I think you'd get away with you it, wouldn't you? Absolutely get away with it. Would you get away with it? What like I'd get away with this hat. I don't know what else you could really put on there. Um, no, no, it's. Let's put a bit of subtle flanger on there just to see what happens. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I don't think it's necessary, but I, I love that. I brought it. You may as well use it. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> That's brilliant. That was pretty good. Really good. Um, really good. So obviously you, you don't have time to be bending down doing all of that during your, your songs, but I think during uh, the, because for wedding gigs, you've got to get there at one o'clock, right? 
set up, sit around all blimmin' afternoon doing nothing. So you probably you, could uh, put but some But you have to in. arrive at one o'clock. You've yeah. got to be there, like, sharp, one yeah. o'clock. Hurry up and wait. We've made you a sandwich. <laughs> this isn't a sandwich. It's bread. <laughs> yeah, there's some butter over there. And you've got to sit down there, nibbing on a dry bit of bread while you're watching the most lavish feast you've ever seen. And you've been there for 10 hours. Um, Right. Anyway, I th I think for tones that I like, I think you've won. Oh, I think you've ooh. got your I think you've got your gain staging sorted out. Yeah. I reckon for versatility, you I've probably got yeah, it. Yeah, you you do, mm. you do. Answers below. What do you think, Hades? You need to score this because we got we got to have scores on the doors. Come on, sunshine. I'm I'm going with you. However, walking down the aisle, it's got to be Nick. <laughs> do you, this this one or the other. This is, you've got to, I see, I'm... I'm higher on your boat. You both play. <sighs> no. Come on, Come you've on. got to pick one. Who's, pick one. Who's getting pick the gig, one. Hades? I'm, I'm sorry, Mick, you're going home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I disagree. Congratulations, I disagree. Okay. Congratulations, well, Dan. No, uh, I, I, comments I, below. To finish off then, um, get, get a sound you like, and I'll get a sound I like, okay. and that'll finish us off. Beautiful. Thank <laughs> you.